We are kind of a diverse team, people from you know all around, and I speak for uh, MIST itself and uh, that uh, and the Ethereum community as a whole. Uh, so let's you know move with the Web3 ecosystem, and let's talk a little bit about uh, the current landscape of it. So we've got MIST, which is a concept browser. Uh, I can tell you more about this later, uh, of course. Uh, we've got the amazing MetaMask, which is a, it's not only an extension, they are much more than that. Um, more, they, they'll talk more about um, some other new projects uh, on the second, the same room. We also have a Brave Browser that joined uh, this ecosystem, uh, you know, two <laughs> years ago. Opera, which recently launched a, a beta, which has Web3 access. You know, Opera is still the fifth major browser uh, worldwide, and this is actually pretty big. So, uh, we have Wallet and some mobile um, experience as well. Mobile, Trust Browser, Cypher, Status, of course, uh, Coinbase, and the list is uh, growing. Can I have this? All right. Maybe that's too far. Oh yeah. So let's talk about Miss History and updates. Actually, actually, this is our fifth uh, DevCon. <laughs> We've heard here since the start. Uh, Alex, which is there, he presented the vision and and <coughs> Alex presented the vision. Uh, and then uh, inspired lots of developers uh, all around the community to, to build uh, other things uh, on it and around it. Can we get it? Oh yeah, so that's Gavin and Alex, you know, several years ago, DevCon zero, and then DevCon one. Can we have it? Oh yeah, DevCon one. <laughs> And then, well, MIS was uh, um, a better, you know, a structured concept. Uh, we got, you know, lots of wireframes and all. And then came the Ethereum wallet. Oh yeah, DevCon two, three, that, that's me, and four. So uh, I like to, you know, make a, a little bit of uh, advertising here. There are some interesting talks from our <laughs> Uh, former and current team members. So there's Universal Logins by Alex later today. This room, uh, Introducing Formality by Victor Maya. Browser Web 3.0, How to Be Secure Web 3 Clients. That's actually a missed uh, thing. And here's our current team. We got uh, Philip, myself, Mark, Alex, and Ryan. Uh, we managed to grow the team. Actually, we were, you know, some dark, uh, you know, times where we had, you know, two developers. Now we're thanks to the Ethereum Foundation, we've got plenty of them. <laughs> Let's talk about things that we've done this year. So there comes a time where a user executes a transaction. So that's actually uh, one thing that should be really carefully th uh, thought about. So we put lots of thought into that because executing transactions is actually the biggest emotional peak in the user experience. Picture that, you're you know, transferring 100,000 ether. <laughs> well, I, I'm pretty sure that your hands would be sweaty, uh, you know, you're deploying a multi-sig wallet that can be dangerous sometimes. Uh, <laughs> so in order to in order to to design it, uh, oh thank you guys, in order to design a a pretty and useful and uh, transaction window, we had to you know the user has to know at a glance what's happening. It has to be a well crafted interface with pretty clear instructions. This is not it. <laughs> this is how it used to be. <laughs> Uh, but we were pretty, uh, you know, by the time we did that, we were pretty happy with that. But now we're changing this. Just something, you know, more clear, more, you know, straightforward. Uh, 
But it doesn't end that, of course. You can transfer, you know, tokens, you can execute functions. Um, and we are, you know, going a bit further than that. Well, the user types a password, executes transaction. Then we can have, you know, this kind of uh, description thanks to NetSpec or RedSpec. Uh, also, you know, thanks to ENS, we can have these kind of uh, more descriptive information about addresses. So yeah, this is our new transaction window. We, we gather and mix lots of uh, information together. So we've got gas estimation, price feed, currency feed, uh, functional ABI signatures, uh, at spec, and in ENS lookup for, uh, address lookup. Well, syncing, that's a major issue. <laughs> uh, back, back in time, back then, we, one could uh, sync the blockchain in a matter of minutes. So we know how it is the state of, its, uh, of this uh, nowadays. Um, and we used to have this uh, loading screen. It was actually needed because otherwise, all the apps that subscribe it to block uh, new blocks would, have, would be bombarded by uh, you know, events from, from the node. So in order to cope with that and to meet user expectations, we could have, you know, make the best load the screen in the world. <laughs> but I'm pretty sure that no one would stare at it for you know, more than five minutes. So we had to be creative. <laughs> and we devised a mechanism to, uh, to have two syncing mechanisms, one with a remote node, you can see in Fuda over there, and a background sync using Go Ethereum like client or fast sync. Uh, and when this node was uh, up to date, it would take over the connection uh, as a main one. So ideally, the users will wait a uh, little time to see uh, in, and interact for, with the blockchain. Uh, when the node takes over, uh, it will be you know, in a totally secure environment, um, totally decentralized fashion. Oh yeah. Hi, Peter. <laughs> That's the responsible for the light client and the go with you. So we've got this, which we call layer nodes, instantly connected to the blockchain via a remote uh, provider. Uh, light client syncing in the background. And well, when it up to date, it just takes over the connection. We implemented a transaction history window, uh, which will gather all transactions made uh, in the browser which is pretty convenient for dApp developers because they wouldn't have to implement that themselves within the, their uh, websites. We're using now Web3 1.0 with WebSockets implemented. And there are some breaking changes to, to how we connect with the websites. Actually, this is a coordinated effort. So misuse it to inject Web3.js uh, within uh, the DOM. So we don't do that anymore. That's up to the dApp developers to, to choose which versions they will use. Um, and then we would only provide the web3.current provider. Uh, this is now changing to window.ethereum only for simplicity's sake. So here we can have the method that will request accounts. And then in MIST, uh, this window will pop up which we can, you can you know, have um, or create a new account or select one or multiple accounts you want to provide to the, to the website. Right? Yeah, so in order to implement, the change will be simple. You have to, uh, to make a web three with this kind of connection. Pretty simple change. And this is a convenient way to access blockchain resources. This is actually uh, a collaboration effort. Um, MetaMask and lots of other players are on this same boat. Uh, you guys can point your devices to this QR code to see uh, more you know, in-depth um, documentation. We are about to roll out in the next weeks. And while, of course, there's a PR for that. We're also making some deep architecture changes. Uh, this is how MIST looks at the moment, okay? 
We've got a browser shell, which we use Electron. We've got uh, the back end made in Node.js and the front end uh, Meteor. Those are all tightly coupled. That makes it quite difficult for us to, to experiment new technologies to, you know, uh, especially when there are, you know, some security concerns, which uh, in our industry is fairly common. So we're changing to this kind of model. So we have totally isolated, a, a really thin browser shell, still using Electron at this moment, but the main process uh, would be separated and the front end would be in React. And that will allow us to make such changes. Uh, we can have lots of updates, frequent ones, just like continuous delivery uh, mechanisms in, in the web development. So you can have, you know, lots of updates, the user will can subscribe to those kind of updates, and of course, with the user consent, we will, it will be as simple as a browser reload, but you're using a, a desktop application. Then we can update only the main process, and eventually when we've got new browser shell uh, versions, you'll update only that again. But hey, why are you still using Electron if you're building a browser? <laughs> that is so true, we agree with that. Uh, and this is a tweet from uh, Jan from Brave Browser. They just got rid of Electron altogether. Uh, and we're planning to do so as well. But uh, we came you know, with a different solution. Uh, we'll be using Chromium Embedded Framework in a project called Tau. Uh, which I highly recommend you guys to watch uh, Philip talk will be on the which day and, and time? You guys hear that? Tomorrow at 2. <laughs> I think we'll be here in that same room, right? Okay. So regarding these deep architecture changes, I think uh, in practice what can bring us to Instead of an 80 megabyte update, at least, it'd be like, you know, less than five megabyte updates for the UI. You know, that's less than a wide image. And you can do that, you know, frequently. We can put our uh, continuous delivery server to, to work for you. So increased cross OS testing effort uh, today is actually a pain for us. So we can get rid of this uh, altogether, making those frequent releases for the interface. And today we put the security burden of validating the checksums uh, to the users. Uh, I think that is not really fair because, you know, sometimes it requires some tooling, additional tooling, you know, um, command line instructions, and we can make it better with automatic checksum validation at module level. A bit more about transparency, uh, we got some feedback saying that, well, our roadmap wasn't uh, quite public, people sometimes wouldn't know exactly what we were working on, so, yeah, we now have medium publications. We've got just one public post there, but we've got three more, you know, just about to be published, so if you guys can follow us there, you'll see. Our roadmap moved from, uh, um, close it application to GitHub uh, projects. And well, today I created Ethereum Miss on Twitter, so you know, good that it was available. So it has, it has zero followers, but you can, can be the first. <laughs> no FOMO, guys. So how to contribute to this project and to this web ecosystem? Well, we have, um, such an amazing community where we can see from, from protocol design, um, uh, studies, research, uh, and how they interact with each other, mainly using, I guess, uh, Ether Research website and some forums, some chats. Uh, but here about web protocols and changes and discussions, we mainly use these ethereumagicians.org website and the EIPs which you are probably familiar with already. Also we have, well, uh, pull requests are pretty welcome. We can guide you uh, 
in your own adventure. <laughs> and I have, you know, this is something that should be, uh, you know, exposed. Uh, a tweet from Afri. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's it. If we don't stop relying on put any centralized service, not just Infura because we love Infura, but you know, that's, I think that's too much on their shoulders. Uh, the vision of Ethereum failed, just like we're defeating the purpose. So I think we should, you know, give more attention and, and to those new projects uh, like line incentivization, uh, Incubed, Dapnode, Vipnode, Dnode. Uh, there's MetaMask project, which I can't pronounce. Maybe it's Muscatella, maybe. <laughs> Uh, and well, of course, universal logins and meta transactions, which you know can remove the burden of um, of the user interfaces uh, altogether. So remember, guys, D stands for decentralized. <laughs> so that that's you know for your own website where you you know are about, is about to to publish it is about to which kind of services you connect to. Uh, this is exactly what we're here for. You know. So, you know, just a bit, yeah, a bit more about our features. Uh, Mist really wants you to have a e real Ethereum node in your computer, um, even if it's a light client or ultra light client in a possible feature. Uh, use of Swarm communication layer. In, and yes, we can read ENS content hosted on Swarm. So that's pretty much it, guys. So the Web3 progress is so exciting. And Miss is so proud to be part of it. <laughs> so thank you so much. Have fun. Thank you.